Are you ready for the Melee? Envy has a brand new road production bike called the Melee that this man has already ridden to victory at the Belgian Waffle Ride, California. I wanna talk about this bike, but maybe we should pull over before I crash you and Willie here. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Your intro was so good All last right. time though. It, was, it like blew me out of the water. Now you gotta do it well. Okay. <laughs> Stop fooling around. <laughs> Are you ready for the Melee? Envy has a brand new road bike, its first production road bike, the Melee. Already been ridden to victory before launch by this man, Alexi Vermeulen at Belgian Waffle Ride, California. Alexi, congrats on that. Again, tell us about your experience briefly with the Melee as far as when you got involved and what you've been doing with it. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's, it's been awesome. Um, I first got to ride the Melee in December when Avery and I went to visit the um, factory in Ogden. Mm -hmm. and then didn't get my own until like late December, early January. Um, but it's been great. I mean, I think the one misconception is like, if you're not in working on a bike a year prior, then you're not really working on it. Like, I think I'm like minute details is what I was brought in to help with, real world problems. Um, but it, I mean, I would have loved to say I was fully involved in this bike, but I'll give credit to the engineers over at MC. <laughs> Maybe they, they knew a thing or two. Yeah, and of course, you know, Envy's heritage and history is in carbon fiber manufacturing yeah. in wheels specifically. That was how they got their start and still like the, the bulwark of their business. Uh, got, Envy got into road bikes with the Custom Road last year, the 2021 Custom Road was the launch of Envy's first bike. I was lucky enough to uh, get one of those to test those. It's an awesome bike. One thing that I love about the Custom Road and the Melee is that it's kind of two things. It's a straight ahead race bike. Yeah. It's got you know steep head angle, you got 73.5, at least in a 56. Yep. Um, and it, you can run tires up to 32, or in your case, a, a Belgian Waffle Ride, 30. which <laughs> is a gravel race, just for the record. This is a road race bike. Belgian Waffle Ride is a gravel race, and you were running what 37s. Size? 37s. Yeah, and those, that was like, I kind of always tell the story just to preface it as like, I called Neil, I was like, hey, this is what I'm debating doing, I've tested it, I can't get it to touch the, touch the frame, <laughs> you know? And Neil's like, wait, whatever works, man, like, you do you. Uh, but the funny thing was the reaction after I won, and one of the engineers heard that I ran 37, he's like, what? <laughs> that's, that's doable, but you run into toe overlap and the bike wasn't made to run tires that big, but it's always cool when, you know, it has that versatility to go from two sides of the spectrum. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just for reference, to compare it to like a Trek, uh, a Monda or a Specialized Tarmac, other, you know, straight ahead road race bikes that have very similar geometry in terms of like, you know, 73.5 head tube or a pretty short wheelbase, yeah. like 991 wheelbase. Those bikes, the Trek and the Specialized, have tire clearance for up to 28s, which is still a pretty yeah. wide tire. Uh, traditionally, we've seen road bikes have wider tires when they're taller, slacker bikes, like an endurance, what we used to call endurance bikes, yeah. are kind of called all road bikes. Uh, so this is unique in that it's, it's a straight ahead race bike, but with a little more clearance. Um, the, the engineer, probably why I don't know who you were speaking to, but <laughs> engineers look at a lot of specifications and yeah. ET. RTO specs are one of them. And there you're supposed to have six mil on each side of clearance on each side. So that's yeah. where these tire clearance come from. You, yeah, you can run a little bit wider, but that's that's for safety just in case there's mud or or you've got a, a softer wheel or whatever that's yeah. moving around. So it's, you want to have some yeah, those, room. Those were the AA, AAV specifications. The, it fit. It didn't. Alexei Aaron Vermeulen. You know, it didn't <laughs> didn't hit the didn't hit the rim. I threw some dirt up inside. Didn't rub it all. So we're uh -huh. good to go. Uh huh. So the, the Melee is being sold as a chassis only, and that includes the frame, the seat posts, the fork, the integrated bar, and integrated stem. The Custom Road had a one-piece bar stem, which looks cool, and a nice thing with the Custom Road is that you can get it the specs customized to you. Comes at a pretty penny, and once you've got it, you've got that for life. You hopefully don't grow. You're or married shrink. forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With this, you get some of the benefits of the integration and in that all the wires and the hoses are tucked inside, but you can change the angle if need be, or yeah. even put on a different bar, put on a different width. Yeah, and I think also just like being a production bike, you know, you're not, it's a little lighter, it's a little stiffer because you're not gluing pieces in place to fit someone's exact mm -hmm. specifications. Mm -hmm. You have a mold, mm -hmm. it's perfect every time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the thought process here is you can, some of the beautiful things about a custom bike also are its detriment. Sure, sure. And uh, this one is a little bit more arrow because yep. you know, they were able to make it uh, slightly narrower. 
out of the gate before this was even launched, you won a gravel race on this road race bike. Did you also race this at uh, US Road Nationals? Yeah, I wish I could have won that too, then I would have been validated and might have retired. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, 24 millimeter tubulars. So. Okay. Very much to end of the spectrum. Old school throwback. Yeah. Yeah, and you've, you've raced a number of bikes over the years, over your career. You've, you're, you know, if those of you not familiar with Alexi, right now he's competing in the Lifetime Grand Prix, which is a six race series, three gravel races, three mountain bike races. His heritage is in you know, world tour level racing uh, across the pond. What do you like in a road bike? Like, what, what sort of characteristics? What personality? Yeah. If you were dating a bike, what would you, what would you put down there? Fast and light. Um, no, I've always like, I've always just been about a bike that feels like it can float up climbs, which I feel like means that it has a good amount of stiffness because when you're standing up, you're kind of throwing that bottom bracket around a little more and then also just doesn't carry that much weight. Mm -hmm. You can usually feel that, you know, mm -hmm. um, like one of my favorite bikes when I was racing under 23 was the BMC SLR01, mm -hmm. which like a lot of people didn't like because you could literally push the top tube down with your thumb. Yeah. Yeah. But I liked it cause it was light and it felt light and it felt like I was moving. And this is the first bike that I've had since that that kind of just takes everything in. You know, it's not a full aero bike. You're not gonna take it at 40 miles an hour and have it beat something that's made to be just a speed bike and a little heavier. Mm -hmm. But I can compare this to like my two other favorite bikes, which is Bianchi, which is a little heavy, and uh, BMC, which is a little light. Yes. And it's the best of both worlds in yes. that sense. Which is pretty cool for your first production bike. What, yeah, What absolutely. you can learn from. And I think like you said, not to keep going, but like they've learned a lot from wheels. So I the best part of this bike is, I think it looks good, I think it does things well, I think it has great tire clearance, mm -hmm. but it rides well. Mm -hmm. Just, I think it's just carbon weave is an art over time. You can't just jump in and, and know where to put a, put a piece of carbon. Sure, yeah, and knowing how the pieces fit together aerodynamically is also a part of the puzzle. You know, Envy has been in wind, wind tunnels for years and years, <laughs> working with Simon Smart, the SES is you know, this you know, smart engineered system. And you can have the fastest wheel in the world, but if the frame is a bit junky, that's yeah. not the fastest overall setup. So uh, that's one advantage that not just Indy, but the, the bike brands yeah. have is like when you design the whole system together, you get a faster yeah. uh, end product. I mean, that's one reason why Envy got into bikes is that some bike companies who had been buying Envy's, Envy wheels for years, yeah. like the Cervelos and the Candles, now they're doing their own wheels. So yeah. Envy was like, well, if a bike brand can do wheels, maybe a wheel brand can do bikes. bikes. And, Seems like it's working out okay. The uh, bike is, the Melee is sold uh, not as a complete bike. You can build that up at your local dealer. The frame set, seat post, bar, stem uh, come for the price of $5,500. So not, not the, uh, the, the cheapest piece in the world. It's in line with the rest of Envy's high-end product offerings. But it's also not, not really uh, too far off from the big brands, the Cannondales, the, the Specialized, yeah. the Trex. Yeah. I think they just, you know, it's cycling is going up and it's finding that line, especially with supply chain issues of where does our bike fit? Mm -hmm. We want it to last for a long time. And it's, I'm excited to see what people think of this bike. Because like when you first saw it at Belgium Waffle Ride, we were like calling Neil on the phone, <laughs> like, hey, Ben's sticking away, is that cool? Yeah, that's cool, I'll talk to him later. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's, it's always cool to be a part of something new, right? Like, and see how people take it and what the public thinks. And um, Regardless of anything, I love riding the bike, and so I hope other people like it so I can keep riding it and there's more to come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's cool being in uh, early with products developing. Like, I was stoked to be able to get one of the first custom roads and was delighted with most everything about it. There were still some little things that needed to be tweaked. So, for instance, the hoses inside the bar stem when you were on dirt or just really choppy pavement, you could hear them kind of thwacking around in there. <laughs> That was one of those things, just quick iteration as they're you know, designing and redesigning in Ogden, yeah. Utah, got that fixed. And so now there's, there's like a little foam liner in there. So yeah, yeah. no, and it's, it's exactly that, right? And it's the cool thing about Envy and where their carbon has led them is, you know, you can have a weird idea and they can mock it up and get it made mm -hmm. within two weeks probably. Whereas that used to take months with supply chain and sending it off to Asia and getting it back. And mm -hmm. hey, here's our design. What do you think? Can you do it? Um, so it'll be cool to see how fast Envy comes into this world. Yes, yes. Yeah, and just, just for clarity, the Mela is made in Asia Factory. Yep. The uh, Custom Road is made in Ogden, but all their, their testing and their manufacturing is made there in Ogden as opposed to some larger brands where the designing is designed in one, in one place, but the, even the prototypes have to be done the other side of the world yeah. and shipped back and forth. So yes, speed things up. Yeah, exactly. So like, like most things with Envy, it's quick. Yes. It's quick. 
Thanks again for that, Alexi. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Best of luck in the rest of your season. If you want to find out more on the Envy Melee, check out envy.com. Happy days. Happy days. Happy days.